since Koshin is here um, working on his documentary, Zen in America, we talked a little bit, I thought that might be something good for me to talk about. I'll need help, though, because I don't know much about it. <laughs> I kind of have to make stuff up. But I don't remember many things, so I make up things. And I, as long as I, it's convoluted enough, you can't really figure out whether I'm making it up or not. Of course I'm making it up. So, Zen is a, tra a free translation. is heart or heart-mind or uh, the Chinese, comes from the Chinese word Chan, sometimes pronounced Jen or Ch I don't know how you do that. How do you say that? Jen? John. John. There. John, like John and Mary. John. John. So, uh, which means a uh, heart-mind, and the symbol for that is a, is a heart image of the heart. So, a kind of Buddhism that comes from the Buddha, as a tradition tells us, but it's a, it's, it emphasizes a Mahayana path, so the big vehicle, the large vehicle, the wide vehicle, the one that puts an uh, emphasis on others, to helping others, rather than just on the self-awakening uh, uh, that the Hinayana does. Not better, not worse, it's all part, it's just different descriptions for the same thing. Different descriptions for the for operations that need to occur. We need to look here, we need to look there. <laughs> so, sometimes they value back and forth uh, uh, about this and that's just a waste of time. So, Zen, or heart-mind, or... Uh, I like to say it this way in the Zen, Zen tradition, there's a... Uh, something called Jijuya Zanmai, which means self-realization samadhi. In other words, you, you have to see this, you need to see this, you can see this yourself. You can actually see it yourself. It's not something you believe in. It's not even something you know in the conventional sense that we know information or concepts or ideas. It's something you, I like to say, something you know way below the radar of ego. You can't really take credit for it. In fact, you can't take the blame for it. You can't there's nothing besides that. It's just this. Fundamentally, it is a realization. When, it, when you see it, you cannot lose it. Unless you lose it, in which case, don't blame me. <clears throat> Sorry about that. If you lose it, you didn't even have it. It was an experience that you were clinging to. The experience of awakening, the idea of awakening. Just the same, we need to have an idea of awakening. Awakening, bodhicitta, is the, is the idea, uh, the, the mind, or the idea, or the aspiration to see completely the truth for ourselves. Bodhicitta, awakened mind, citta. Uh, America, Zen in America. Uh, if we look at Zen as it come, came down through the centuries, through this, the various stories which you've probably all read about, you've studied this at all, it keeps coming, it co uh, comes through a bloodline or lineage, and our particular lineage uh, here, the Soto lineage of Japan, uh, goes back into Cao Tang, which is another uh, form that uh, uh, this particular sect uh, that, it, that supposedly began with the Bodhidharma, which uh, goes on back through his teacher, uh, Prajna Tara, in, India, who supposedly sent him here to China because he had to wake, wake people up there. And so, uh, there are a lot of stories about this. I have read a few, you probably have too. I, I'm not a historian nor a scholar, so I can't comment on from that point of view so much as telling you the history or historicity of anything. But I can tell you this, that uh, this is Zen in America, right here. And if you go to Grand Rapids and go to their temple, that's Zen in America. And if you go to Ann Arbor, to their temple, or to Bloomington, or uh, to um, uh, Udambara in uh, Chicago, or any of the temples out west, all of the place, that's Zen in America. So wherever this is, uh, wherever the word Zen is used, wherever this lineage is appearing in all its different uh, forms, uh, is Zen, or the lineage or the teaching of uh, Awakening, the teaching of realization, not the teaching of believing in a 
in the Buddha. We don't necessarily believe, nor do we disbelieve in a Buddha. It's not about believing. It's not about accepting, rejecting. It's about always, as you hear, have heard me say, probably to distraction. It's about awareness. It's about being aware. Quite often this is a confused for experience and for our thought process of positive, negative, neutral. <clears throat> so, from uh, the f first uh, few years of the last century, 1903, uh, Soyen Shaku came from Japan through invitation <coughs> and began teaching Zen. It was in San Francisco, Kochi? California, at least. Yeah, yeah. Someplace in California. So, um, and that's, that basically was the beginning, and there probably wasn't much of a fanfare over that. But then it's slowly uh, down through the centuries, I mean not centuries, but down through the decades, uh, has uh, spread more and more and more all over. Um, now there are literally hundreds of, of uh, shall we say, uh, qualified or at least experienced teachers in the United States, hundreds and hundreds of them all over the place. So when a tradition like that that goes back several thousand years, uh, appears in a culture like ours where it's, the emphasis is on the Judeo-Christian orientation, which is a much different kind of spiritual path. Not better, not worse, just different. Uh, and when it comes into this particular kind of culture, this particular situation, it, uh, even though the, the forms are there, it starts to change uh, and usually changes and, and is changing here in terms of just the combinations of causes and conditions that arise as individuals, that arises as buildings, um, all of the cultural things that are here already, and that this teaching that uh, of, of no self, no other, this teaching of transcendence tries to find its roots or uh, survive. Uh, my first teacher, Chogyam Trungpa Rinpoche, uh, I feel looking back, I feel that his main mission was to, he could see how difficult it was going to be, and his main mission was to find a way to take the Buddhist teachings in their essence and transplant them in a culture that wasn't particularly conducive to uh, the traditional uh, form of uh, Tibetan Buddhism, the, the four schools of uh, uh, Tibetan Buddhism, of which his was the Kagyu and the Nyingma. So we have a Shambhala, uh, Shambhala training, the Shambhala Buddhism, which is just a, a I'm not going to go off into that, but it's, it's just a way that he saw our culture, understood the Buddhist teachings, and, and the inspiration to have an, an enlightened society. So he's looking at it not only from the individual point of view, but from uh, the society, the idea of enlightening or awakening society to those things which are really valuable, which are, of course, um, anything that uplifts everyone rather than just uh, prioritizes and makes some people higher and some people lower. <coughs> so as I'm sure Koshin has beginning to see, and probably it's known all along, every place you go, those of you who have been to several different temples, many of you have, see it's, it's not like there's a different thing being taught, but a different way, it's coming through, for instance, if you went to Japan uh, and studied there, or a place where it's been, uh, the Zen tradition has been around for hundreds of years, it's, it's gotten kind of uh, enculturated, or it's starting to take up a solid kind of form, you could say solid. Whereas, in our situation, it's only been here a short time, a little over a hundred years. And so, it's like first, beginning of second generation. <clears throat> so there's so many things changing in America, let alone our, our uh, not just America, but the entire world, the, uh, as uh, uh, Marshall McLuhan, Buckminster Fuller, back in the 60s, were talking about global village, the idea that things are going to uh, 
that you might know more about what's happening uh, in, a, in, a, in Paris than you would about someone who lived who was just down the street from you. You might know more uh, about them, uh, about that situation, just because of the communication that's going on. So, <coughs> excuse me. So, I might be able to give a more complete and thorough talk entitled Zen in America after a couple of years from now when I watch uh, a Cochin's <laughs> documentary. <laughs> so um, we could have, we, well let's, have, let's do this together, let's have some interaction questions about this and we'll take it a little further. Um, your home Kogan, your teacher, was a big figure in this. Do you have a good story about Kogan that may not be on the internet or people 